<laughs> okay, so I'll just now tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a scientist uh, working in molecular biology field, molecular genetics. Uh, I'm not a medical doctor. I'm holding a PhD uh, degree and I'm running research in Tel Aviv University uh, for um, a little bit more than 20 years. And the field of my interest in the, is the regulation of gene expression. So here I have something to show. You know that the secret of life, actually, is in the cell, in the cell. So life is actually a well-coordinated process of gene expression. It's a concert of gene expression. And we have, uh, in each and every cell in our body, a little safe with the secret of life. The safe is the nucleus, and the secret is in the DNA. DNA is our chromosomes, and this is the software of the computer who runs life. And the software, I mean, no, the DNA is the hardware, and the software is the genetic code. And we scientists, we would like to understand the software amazing software, how to make a human being from a single cell of a fertilized egg. So this is my ambition, and as all scientists, they would like to understand the secret of life. Now, to understand the gene expression, the regulation of gene expression, one has to understand how it goes. First of all, DNA is transcribed to RNA. I'm sure many of you know it already. And the RNA is then translated into proteins. And we are studying in my lab regulation of protein synthesis. So this is a very well-coordinated process and sophisticated process. And we study this process. So there are few facts that are known, that were known before we started the research on the vanishing white matter. First of all, Protein synthesis is a tightly coordinated process. And second of all, protein synthesis responds to cellular stress by adaptation. So it's like a traffic in the, in the street. So when there is a traffic jam, you have lights, green light, red light, okay, to coordinate this uh, process. Uh, one day I read a paper, a scientific report, it was a paper from a, a Dutch group uh, run by uh, Dr. Mario van der Knapp, and she said in this report that she identified a gene that is responsible for vanishing white matter. I didn't know that at all. It was 12 years ago, and I read this paper and I said, wow, this is amazing, because how come a protein, the name of the protein is EIF2B, it doesn't matter now, how come this master regulator protein affects the brain only? Because as far as I know, the master regulator is a very important protein uh, in each and every cell type, not only in the brain. So I thought, okay, this is a very important and interesting scientific question, and I started to study it in the lab. This was 12 years ago. And in order to study this, we decided to make a mouse model for the disease because we cannot take brain cells from patients, of course. So we introduced into the mouse, into the genome of the mouse, a specific mutation that causes vanishing white matter. So now we have a mice, mouse strain and they serve as an endless source of brain cells so we can study the etiology of the disease. And so we discovered a uh, few, few very important uh, discoveries. First of all, that myelination by itself generates cellular stress. Myelination is the key point here because vanishing white matter is loss of myelin. And we, and we discovered that the mutated cells are hypersensitive to physiological stress. And another very important discovery was that EF2B mutant cells lost their tight coordination of protein synthesis. And then we discovered that this was very recent discovery that by introducing a traffic light, genetic traffic light, we can rebalance the process. 
So by doing that, we actually cured the mice. So this is just only one slide of data, biological data. You see here uh, myelin surrounding nerve cells, I mean the nerve fiber. So the black here is myelin, and you see by uh, the red side here is very high magnification by electron microscopy, and you see that the myelin is very thick and nice in the normal mice. The second one is the vanishing white matter mice. It has very low, very thin myelin. However, the double mutant, the one that we introduced another mutation into, is cured. It doesn't have any problem of myelin. So this was a major scientific discovery in our lab. And here you see that my lab group's members are really celebrating this discovery. We went to a restaurant, we were very happy. And we were happy because this opens the door for therapy. So now we know what to do. So we have now to uh, develop a, an assay for high throughput screening for uh, many, many drugs that are already FDA approved drugs. So this is our mission for now. And with your contribution, we will hopefully make it. Uh, so future aims are, first of all, to develop a cell-based assay for high-throughput screening. And the second aim, which hopefully will be very, very soon, with your contribution, I hope it will be soon, we want to screen for many thousands of FDA-approved drugs. And now I'll finalize my uh, little speech with uh, just uh, something that I would like you to know. The driving force of my research is, of course, scientific curiosity. This is my profession. I study the uh, translational regulation of gene expression. But the other very important driving force is an emotional driving force. And the story began like that. One day when I went to a meeting in Boston, it was about seven years ago, a, a physician that works with the uh, vanishing white matter uh, patients called me and said, can you please meet the father of a girl named Mary Sol? She was just diagnosed with vanishing white matter and please meet him. He wants to understand something about what we are doing. I said, okay, why not? He came to the hotel, to the lobby of the hotel and I sat with him and explained to him what I know and he gave me a picture of Mary Sol, his cute little girl, and I decided that's it, I'm hooked. I must do something for this girl, and from this moment on, I'm also emo emotionally involved with the disease. So if you noticed uh, Donna's presentation before, it ran and it says Mary Sol mice. Mary Sol mice means that this mice that we made was uh, held a Marisol mutation and this was because when I came back to Israel after meeting this father, the father of Marisol, I decided to just make it, do the, the mice model and study the disease. And since then I really, I'm really uh, would like to, to, to find a cure and now when I met so many other families, I really want to help. So with your contribution I will. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you.